Let's look at call forwarding implementation. We'll look at two scenarios. A simple option where users configure call forward all and we configure all other destinations as go to voicemail. And a more complicated scenario with additional requirements for user configuration and destinations. For the simple solution where users configure call forward all only, we set the enterprise parameter show call forwarding to show only forward all. We'll configure the forward all calling search space as line unrestricted calling search space and the secondary calling search space for forward all as XXX unrestricted no 911 calling search space so that we can test all kinds of patterns. We'll set call forward for the other conditions to go to voicemail for all lines in the enterprise. The calling search space for these will be Enterprise Internal No 911 Calling Search Space. This is what the Cisco Unified CM Administration directory number page looks like for a Montreal DN. The forward all calling search space is set to line unrestricted calling search space for testing. There are two kinds of patterns to test. Site specific Patterns that have site-specific routing local to a site, including site-abbreviated dialing, and local 7 and 10 digit dialing. And global. Patterns that are global, including internal numbers that are global for the enterprise, and long-distance and international patterns, which can be successfully routed out any gateway in the enterprise. These two kinds of patterns have different behavior. We'll look at site-specific patterns first site abbreviated dialing, local 10 digit, and local 7 digit. Let's test forwarding for site abbreviated dialing. Here we call forward all Winnipeg 602-4001 to 4002. Then we call 860-24001 from Hamilton to see what happens. When we call 8602-4001, we get forwarded to Winnipeg 602-4002. It's a success! Here we call forward all Winnipeg 602-4001 to the 10-digit external number 204-273-0000 configured on the Winnipeg 602 test phone. Then we call 8602-4001 to see what happens. We need a 9 to configure call forwarding to external numbers. We omit the 9 in our example, but you need it for the configuration. When we call 8602-4001, we get Fast Busy? What's going on here? Now call forward all Winnipeg 602-4001 to the seven digit number 310-0000 configured on all test phones for each area code. Then we call 8602-4001 to see what happens. Let's keep an eye on the Hamilton 601 test phone, which has the same seven digit number configured. Remember that the same seven digit number called from two different locations, Hamilton and Winnipeg in this case, represent two different parties, one in Hamilton and one in Winnipeg. When we call 8602-4001, we are forwarded to the local Hamilton seven digit number not the Winnipeg 7-digit number. What's going on here? Local route groups. The Hamilton 601-4002 phone is using its own local route group to route to the call forward destination configured in Winnipeg. Winnipeg 10-digit numbers are not reachable from the Hamilton gateway. Worse, Winnipeg 7-digit numbers may have copies in other area codes so instead of reaching the desired Winnipeg number, callers will reach a completely different party in their own local area. 
If we forwarded the Winnipeg phone to an international number, callers would connect to that number using their own gateway regardless of their class of service, potentially incurring toll charges. Are you serious? How will we explain this to our users? Fortunately, this is easy to fix. We can change the local route group for redirected calls service parameter from its default local route group of calling party to local route group of last redirecting party. There are issues with this in roaming. See our next drawing, Dial Plan for Mobility. Now when we call 8602-4001, we get forwarded to the Winnipeg 7-digit number 3100000 when that's the destination. Now when we call 8602-4001, we get forwarded to the Winnipeg 10-digit number 204-273-0000 when that's the destination. Another success! We'll look at global patterns now. Enterprise-wide internal numbers, long-distance numbers, and international numbers. We'll test forwarding from Winnipeg to the Montreal internal number 8573-6001. Then we call 8602-4001 from Hamilton to see what happens. When we call 8602-4001, we get forwarded to the internal number 8573-6001. Ah, sweet success! Here we call forward all Winnipeg 602-4001 to the long distance external number 1722-555-0000 configured on all test phones. Then we call 8602-4001 to see what happens. When we call 8602-4001, we get forwarded to the long distance number 1722-555-0000 via the Winnipeg Gateway. Success! Here we call forward all Winnipeg 602-4001 to the international number 011-689-0000 configured on all test phones. Then we call 8-602-4001 to see what happens. When we call 8602-4001, we get forwarded to the international number 011-689-0000 via the Winnipeg Gateway. We don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but that's another success. We can test restricting call forward all using a more restrictive forward all calling search space, line local calling search space. If we try to forward to long distance, or international numbers. We get fast busy. Let's look at a more complicated scenario. Enterprise 20 has these requirements. Whatever we do, it had better be easy to explain to our users. We'll never allow call forwarding to E911. Some users expect to configure forward all, forward busy, and forward no answer destination themselves. We will allow call forwarding to local numbers in all cases. We will allow call forwarding to long distance numbers if the user has to log in to configure the destination. Remember that our long distance configuration blocks high risk area codes. And we need to configure lines differently for different kinds of users. Some executives want no restrictions on any calling. For this scenario, 
We'll set the Enterprise Parameter Show Call Forwarding to show all settings. We'll configure the Forward All Calling Search Space as Line Local Calling Search Space and the Secondary Calling Search Space for Forward All as XXX Unrestricted No 911 Calling Search Space. Because we only have a single calling search space for other forwarding conditions, our options are not great. Internal, Enterprise Internal No 911 Calling Search Space, or XXX Internal No 911 Calling Search Space, or Unrestricted, XXX Unrestricted No 911 Calling Search Space. The first case doesn't meet our requirements for local destinations. The second case allows forwarding to anywhere. We'll choose XXX Unrestricted No 911 Calling Search Space for now because it meets our requirements and needs no extra configuration. We'll assume the toll fraud risk is low because users must be logged in. We're not recommending this. We'll revisit this decision. We configured Winnipeg 602-4001 for testing site-specific patterns. Call forward busy 9204-273-0000 and call forward no answer 9310-0000. Call forward no answer will activate after the line has been ringing for the no answer ring duration. The default is 12, but we set this to 5 in the lab. Call Forward Busy will activate if the number of calls on the line is greater than or equal to the Busy Trigger value. The default is 2, but we set this to 1 in the lab. First we call Vancouver Internal Number 8595-6001. When we call Winnipeg 8602-4001 with a call to Vancouver internal number 8595-6001 active on the line, we get forwarded to the Winnipeg 10-digit number 204-273-0000. When we call 8602-4001 after waiting 5 seconds of ring no answer, we get forwarded to the Winnipeg 7-digit number 310-0000. Of course you're expecting we'd be successful again. We tested site abbreviated dialing patterns. They worked fine. We tested the remaining global patterns, internal, long distance, and international, and they also worked fine. This was the really important stuff, and so far everything works the way we want. Enterprise 20 looked at a simple and a more complicated scenario for call forwarding. We decided the more complicated scenario better suited our requirements for a collaboration product. What are your requirements for call forwarding? What options can users configure? What restrictions will be applied to call forwarding destinations users can configure? What destinations do administrators have to configure? And what can these destinations be? What are you going to tell your users? This drawing is continued in Dial Plan for Call Forwarding and Voicemail Integration, Part 3. Part 3 discusses AAR and CIFR. Stay tuned!